in the second part of the tutorial on the constraint Monte Carlo method in vampire and uh, anisotropy energy we'll look at um, how to run simulations for a cubic material and which could be the difference with respect to um, the previous case well just before we look into this so uh, materials that have a cubic symmetry in their crystal structure usually uh, will also have um, this symmetry in the magnetic properties which that means they might exhibit a cubic anisotropy so a cubic anisotropy means that we have three um, equivalent directions along the um, major axis so say x y and z directions um, and other four equivalent directions which are the diagonals of our cube and um, depending on the uh, sign of the uniaxial uh, of the energy uh, anisotropy energy constant we will have either the three equivalent directions to be these axis or the hard axis now we will we'll, uh, try to um, run a simulation uh, actually two for this uh, cubic anisotropy case where we assume we have the easy axis along the major uh, crystallographic directions and um, to do so we will go on our terminal now because the simulations uh, did take a while on my computer I did run them in, in advance but I am in the to be cubic theta zero folder within the constraint Monte Carlo uh, input files uh, within the vampire key directory. And now you will see that I did run the simulations already and I required to output the spin configuration. So what I also have is now um, all these spins files. That we might want to uh, process to see how the configurations are but the main thing we want to look at you will find are the cubic dot material file and the input file the cubic material file we can just have a very quick look um, is this iron like material where the important uh, statement is this one we require to have a cubic anisotropy constant and because the sign here is a positive this will set the anisotropy to be along one of the three uh, major directions could have minus then would have been along the, uh, the diagonals and in our input file the only thing I did to run it with respect to the one you will find an input file in the uh, in the directory is to set the parameters for the temperature range so I said to go from 0 to 600 the step of 300 so that we will just get three temperatures and I left the angle uh, settings as they as you will find them so in this case also the, the directory suggests we will uh, explore the torque along the um, theta zero direction and I do specify this because in a cubic material because we have now all these in equivalent directions the profile of the torque and so the free energy will depend also on the rotational angle so the other case we will actually set this direction to be 45 degrees and then the other thing as before I set the screen output which will make it slightly slower but we can control what is happening and then I added the flag to output the configurations uh, spin configurations and I set rate 1 for this kind of simulations the output rate corresponds to each uh, increment in the angle B uh, phi or theta so each of the spin configurations here correspond to one step, final step of the angle increment. And then, so uh, what we can do 
is to plot our data as we did previously. So we are now we're actually we can look at our output file and says that we have our um, temperature, our theta, which you, we set at zero, our angle phi, which varies a step of 11.25 degrees, our magnetization length, and our torque as usual. We will look at the torque along y. So then what we can do is to plot. And if we do these again, I will use the same um, same syntax uh, when I'm plotting as in the previous tutorial. So I'm just sorting my data so that I have I will be able to plot with lines um, minus k then along theta and then we will plot the output file using let me say if first column which is the temperature is equal to zero Kelvin then we will plot theta otherwise we don't want to plot anything and so we give to plot 0 over 0 which cannot be plotted and we will plot 6 we can say with line point and we say title 0 Kelvin and this will give us our nice plot and then we can see there is already a difference with respect to the um, Linear actual now, the the angle variation resemble a sine of four theta along the uh, easy axis uh, one zero zero, and um, as a matter of fact, if we would normalize by the maximum. Of the torque at zero Kelvin, which happens at 22.5 degrees, we would then be able to actually compare these with a sine or theta. Will not actually perform a fit, but I will show you that um, if, you, if you would feed the data, this will this would be. following the relationship. So we create this parameter, maximum torque, and I will plot now this torque now just because I plotted divided by uh, the maximum torque with a minus, you will now have the torque starts from the, the plot is positive and then goes negative. And then if we say to plot just with points, well actually let's leave the line point and we'll compare this with sine of 4 and then we'll convert the coordinates from radians to degrees and sorry when we do this we will actually see that our curve that now is the our data which is this spline line and then this move is the sign of our theta so in this case we can see that we actually have obtained our um, our result as expected by theory interestingly though um, we could do the same for the case where we have now the two C cubed theta 45, which I have run as well, and um, already. And again, this will take a little while, especially due to the outputting of the, com of the coordinates. And if you run them at the same time, at least my computer will slow down a little bit. So just to make sure this is what we were doing, show you here the constraint is 45 degrees you find this in the input file again I set all the rest of the parameter as in the previous case if we now plot and we get rid of t max for a second 
we will now clearly observe a different trend. These are our now zero axis we can see. So this y, for example, in this case, um, for a cubic material, you would actually need, if you want to fully capture the uh, anisotropy of the system, to perform simulations varying uh, also the azimuthal angle over the whole range. And um, this is what you could do. Now, if we go back to the slides, we would see that the simulations. And so we see that the um, results would be like this. Uh, we see the torque, left case when we um, explore the theta zero case, which will be here in this graph um, for the surface, energy surface for a pure cubic material where this graph is uh, from Dr. Richard Evans' uh, PhD thesis. So you have azimuthal angle or polar or rotational angle, and you can see here clearly you would have different energy, different properties depending on the set of theta and phi you choose and in fact when you look at the torque you see clearly this in this case on the left hand side i actually did plot the sine of four theta um, relationship directly with not a field and i just scaled the Uh, you will need more points, so you will need actually to, otherwise you will need to interpolate this curve first in order to achieve a decent integration, but the point is you need all this um, information. So, I will not plot, in this case, the configuration files because there's not much to see, it's not very interesting. So we will now instead focus on more um, why, for example, we would actually want to use this construct Monte Carlo. Well, here we'll show some of the um, results that I obtained when um, I was investigating the, and I'm still investigating the properties of magnetic tunnel junctions, which are these um, Three layer structures in the simplest way, where you have two ferromagnets with a ferromagnetic insulator in between. This is the major component of a magnetic resistive random access memory that, I, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, is a, a new type of uh, memory uh, which is based on magnetism and requires, in order to sort information, the high anisotropy in the ferromagnet. In order to ensure that the magnetization, which whose mag whose direction um, substantially uh, uh, saves the information um, and will be our bit zero one, needs to be uh, stable for a long time, ideally at least ten years. So I uh, investigated cobalt iron borum. Um, MGO, where the cobalt iron bottom is the ferromagnet, MGO is the magnetic insulator and the interface in this uh, nanoscale magnet of thickness between 1 and 1 1.5 nanometers um, in diameters, which you ideally don't want to have larger than 30 nanometers, uh, possibly down to 10. The, and the interface between the cobalt iron and the magnesium oxide MGO um, develops a very high interfacial anisotropy with a uniaxial character, main uniaxial character, and um, this makes that when we that the energy barrier of the system will not be 
but um, and so the, the anisotropy will not be the one of a purely uniactual system because this this anisotropy develops at the interface and um, moreover it also uh, induces the formation of domains which um, will alter your energy surface um, classically you would have a flattening of your of your energy profile uh, meaning that your anisotropy is lower and your energy barrier is lower and this, these results have been obtained performing constraint Monte Carlo simulations on such systems that you can see you can obtain all these interesting properties which I don't know why might be um, complex especially if we compare with analytics where in the sine square of theta we can see fails in uh, in reproducing the characteristic and then so where we have this non-coherent -co reversal because the system is also large enough to accommodate two domains of reverse magnetization directions and then if you also apply field you can see that the uh, things complicate a bit and again the lines here shows what an analytic prediction for a coherent system would give you but in this case uh, again it would fail at reproduce entirely the property so these are for example cases where you want to use constraint Monte Carlo but to go further uh, we can actually do simulation with a hybrid constraint Monte Carlo which means uh, we if we have more than one material in our system we could uh, decide to apply the constraint to uh, one material only or a different constraint to different materials it is that we, the approach works essentially in the same way but allows you to uh, uh, work independently on different materials and it can be useful for example if you have stacks of materials with different properties or you have grain boundaries and so on and here in fact the example that I will show you where this algorithm has been actually used uh, is for example in a granular system for a coordinate media so imagine you have this film and you have this hexagonal grain that you here you see from the top view so imagine this column this hexagonal columnar systems uh, which have uniaxial anisotropy with strong anisotropy and you have um, no magnetic atoms which separate them and in this case they also add some magnetic impurities between these uh, grains which can vehicle the interaction then what they did was to study how the uh, toric and free energy um, were affected by different density of magnetic impurities and you can see uh, this is for example 300 Kelvin for different um, impurities densities this is toric this is free energy they did also as function of temperature so you cannot investigate all this set of uh, properties so what I will show finally uh, which though I won't run the simulation and I will just you will find the input files um, and I'll show you how to set them is to run a simulation for a hybrid CMC simulation so different from a constraint Monte Carlo simulation that I showed you before the standard one um, in the input file you won't need anymore to specify the constraint uh, along the uh, rotational and zimuthal angle because they will specify be specified uh, in the material file so they are material dependent but we will have to change the integrator and the program so now we'll be, we will have any hybrid constraint Monte Carlo integrator and a hybrid CMC in terms of program moreover we can now uh, output rather than the global properties um, or at least in case of the constraints we will now want to output the material constraint theta and material constraint phi whereas we can actually add to the output uh, mean total torque that we had before also the um, material mean torque which is the torque for each material and now instead in the material file we will have to specify per each material whether it's constrained or not so this line tells you whether tells the code whether it has to apply any constraint a constraint equal true it will do and then we will have again same as was before in the input file um, the constraint 
for the theta and phi angle. So in this case, for example, I set theta to be fixed along the uh, along zero, to be set at zero, and instead phi is set to vary between zero and ninety degrees, and in steps of fifteen in this case. So what I then want to show is just um, how would an input file look like. So if we go now in our 2D finite size effect extras, you will find uh, now two files, the bilayer and the input file. And we can have a look. If we look at the input file, we see that um, what I did in this case, first of all, was to remove the boundary along Z, because the idea is that we want to build a bilayer where top and bottom materials have different properties. So we don't want to replicate this uh, infinite. We just want to have, say, a thin film. And I set an average uh, unit cell size between the two materials that will be the cubic and the uniaxial material that we used before. Uh, realistically, that you would have some mismatching in the, in the interface between the two, but in this simple case we can neglect, although this could be included by the unit cell file. I specify which is our material file, which we will have a look in a second. And then, now we will see the input file becomes a bit simpler, we just specify the temperature range. We don't specify any more the constraint on phi and theta, and we will now have the integrator said hybrid constraint Monte Carlo program hybrid CMC. And in the output file, we can see now we have our material mean torque in addition and material constraint phi, material constraint theta. This means that you will have now some more columns because for each material you will have. So the, the material constraint theta will output uh, the theta value per each material. So if you have two material, you will have two columns. If you have three, you will have three, and so on. So you will have more columns in this output file. Same for constraint phi and mean total torque. And then in this case, it's have to be outputting also the spin configuration. If we look at the bilayer, we see now the First, we now specify to these two materials. The first one, the what we set to be the bottom material, is our cubic iron that we just uh, sent before. And now, one thing that we need to add with respect to the simple single material case is that we need to specify the interaction between material one and material two. This interaction must be symmetric. So, material one. Interaction between material one and material two must be the same as material two, material one. And I set uh, the same values I will set for the bulk uh, in the actual system just to ensure that the period temperature at the interface follows the, um, the one of the highest. And um, we can see then the what we need to add related to the constraint Monte Carlo simulation will be. These seven column and uh, seven rows we have flag for saying that it's going to be constrained. Uh, we fix in this case the direction along the polar angle to be zero, uh, theta equals zero, and instead we will vary in this case, for example, from zero to 90 degrees, step of 11.25 degrees along the azimuthal angle. And we set minimum and maximum 8 in this case, not anymore 0, 1, but 0, 0, 5. So this means that the first half of the material will be occupied by this cubic system. For the material 2, um, is our uniaxial. As said, now we have added the exchange between 2 and 1 and 2 and 2, so 2 and 2 is the uniaxial, 2, 1 is uniaxial cubic and it's the same as set uh, for material 1. The height, now this will be from 0, 0.5 to 1, which means the top uh, half of the system. And um, finally, we'll set the properties in this case for the constraint multicolor simulations. 
we set to be constrained in this case because we is a uniaxial system and what we want to do is to constrain it along the design easy axis direction and to keep it fixed. Um, let's assume for example we are pinning this um, this material via change bias or uh, a synthetic antiferromagnet structure let's assume and we want to see what happens on the door of a cubic material in this case and we could compare in principle this for example with the previous simulation of a purely bulk cubic system and that's it now I said it will not run uh, in this case the simulation but I would recommend um, to do it and the final word I would say to rerun the tutorial that have been shown uh, the, the example shown in the tutorials um, investigating the whole range temperatures and also actually increasing the um, the number of angles over which you calculate the uh, the torque so that you can get a better description and you can also try to extract then uh, in a better way the uh, the free energy and so the anisotropy energy density um, also an interesting thing for example if you want to understand uh, what happens uh, when you go from a bulk system reducing the dimensions for example uh, when you get to a thin film, um, you could remove along Z the periodic boundary condition and see what happens to the torque and to the free energy. Um, and also, I would suggest to try to write a simple tool that is able to integrate the angular dependence of the torque. Because as I showed you, there are cases where um, just a quadrature metal where you know where the maximum is might not be sufficient because. That would rely on the fact that you know the analytic expression, which might not be the case. And uh, sometimes interpolation might be useful. If you really uh, can't, and then you might want to need, uh, you, you might ask for help. But I would suggest, as a first try, to try to write a simple tool or to use a simple tool to integrate.